For the first time in history, the UFC has three Mexican-born champions. So that's why we're sitting here in Mexico City with Alexa Grasso, the flyweight champion, Brandon Moreno, the flyweight champion, and Jair El Pantera Rodriguez, the interim 145 champion. Uh, guys, are you feeling to be back in Mexico, having these three belts? Like something that uh, probably uh, was hard to believe a couple of years ago, but how are you guys feeling? Uh, how are you feeling, Jair, to have this belt in Mexico? Almost nine years before, uh, after the, you, you, your first fight here in Mexico in the UFC. Well, this is like a dream come true for us. Uh, it's, been, it's been a long journey for all of us, a lot of up, ups and downs, but uh, we, we're finally here. And I tell for all of us when I say we are all proud of, of being in this situation. And I think we're, we're going for more. And it's just a matter of time. Alexa, you fought against a really dominant champion in, in Valentina Shevchenko. A lot of people doubt you. How do you feel have here to be realizing this, this is all really happening? Well, it's just uh, pure hard work, dedication, believing in myself. And it's really inspiring for me to watch them winning first. So I, I was not going back to Mexico without Let's the go. third belt. <laughs> Let's go. And, and for Brandon, this, this was your, your fifth championship fight in, in, in a row. You, you, you already had a chance to be here in Mexico with the belt. Uh, you even get to see the president uh, when you won the, the championship for the first time. But how does it feel now to, to have these two friends, uh, the, like Jair, like Alexa, you trained with them in the past. How do you feel to be here as a champion, sharing this moment with, uh, with them? I think it's a, it's a crazy feeling, um, you know, because everything started this January with my fight, right? And then, uh, Jair fall in, in Australia, then Alexa in Vegas. So everything, like maybe November, December last year, everything looks like crazy, like wow! In what moment three Mexicans born and raised in the country are fighting for uh, uh, the, champion of the, uh, the championship of the UFC? But man, I don't know, I'm just happy. Obviously, talking about me, like just held to the Mexican mixed martial arts to uh, more, make more moments like this, and obviously, as a friend, you know, as uh, Jair friends, Alexa friends, like, watch how these guys put a lot of effort to get these belts, too. Like, it's, it's amazing. Uh, in, in your own words, why would you say we come to this? Why would you say this happened? How, how do we come to have three Mexican champions? Uh, we, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm talking for all of us. We believe in, in our uh, own uh, skills. We believe in our own uh, dreams. And we did it. Obviously, we sacrificed a lot of different things. We did a lot of hard work. But I don't know, I man. I, I, I think just we, 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 uh, three both, we were very persistent. Jair? Yeah, I'll say that's what Brandon just said, you know, is just being uh, resilient and just a lot of sacrifices, hard work, dedication, things that everybody already knows. But one thing is saying it, and one thing is doing it. There's a, there, there are two different things, you know. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot to, to do this. You know, it's been it's been a long journey, like I already said, and uh, it's just like a dream come true because in the beginning, it was a dream just to be in the UFC. It was almost <laughs> impossible in my yeah, head, right? And uh, we start like step by step, like getting all these achievements. And winning fights, going a lot of up and ups and downs, and uh, you know it's just a matter of being resilient, and you can get to be anywhere you want to be. Alexa, you always say, "Dear hard work." I mean, it takes <laughs> yeah, a lot of hard work, work. but but what else uh, you, you think happened in, in in Guadalajara, in Mexico? So this change, and now we can have uh, a, a female champion in the UFC. Well, I was um, asked asked a few times, like, what does Mexico needs? to have champions in the UFC. I always said, it's just a matter of time. And when I saw Brandon winning the first time, it was like, okay, yeah, this can be true. This can be true, and this, this is going to happen. And then, yeah, here, and I was like, hell yes, I can do that too, and I'm going to achieve it. So um, I think we just need uh, a real and an example, someone that we know close to, to know that it can be achievable. Achievable. <laughs> uh, you, you guys were part of the first uh, development program. You, you arrived a couple of months earlier than, 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 than Brandon. 
you both trained with the with John Jones, who's, who was already the, 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 the champion at the moment. And I know you have like a, a closer relationship with yeah. him. You, you train a lot, a lot more time in, in, in Albuquerque. How do you feel like now? There's even a chance that you can even share a, a card with, with John. I mean, the, the, the talks about it, but I don't know if it's going to happen. But I mean, like being there, like he was like the biggest star in in, 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 in the world at the, at the moment. And, and then you can be like, like sharing a, a championship card with him. Well, that's that's impressive, you know. Uh, he he always was really nice to me, and he had always good things to say to me. I know he has done a lot of mistakes. He's been through a lot of ups and downs in his life and his career. But I I, I truly you know believe that uh, everybody can do mistakes and, and still uh, keep on doing better every time. And John John Jones is the perfect example of that. And uh, I remember one time when I was training. Albuquerque, and then he approached to me and he said, hey, can, can you come here, please? And I was like, yeah, for sure. He's like, what's your name? Like, I told him my name, and he was like, your skills are impressive. How old are you? And I was 20, 21 years old in that moment. And he said, when I was 21 years old, I didn't have those skills. You're going you're gonna to get far on these sports. Just keep going. And uh, you know that coming from John Jones in that moment when he wasn't my friend, and uh, he was just giving me inspiration words. It was like uh, something really special for me. And uh, you make me believe in myself even more. Brandon, you, you, you trained in, in Tijuana for most of your career, but you, you always, like, you, you moved to uh, Albuquerque, Arizona, California. You, you always, like, were training in, in with, like, uh, elite flyweights, especially elite flyweights. So, uh, how, how was how, how was important for your process like to, to become like one of the best flyweights in the world? I th I think w that was one of, of my keys for from my success in my career because I'm trying to be always a student. It's, it's I, for me it's very important to always be uh, be a, a, an open minor, you know, like try to get all the knowledge I can, be very respectful with all my teachers, with all my uh, professors, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, you want to call it, but uh, like get all the knowledge and try to share that knowledge to, uh, to your people, right? I remember like, I don't know, I was going to, uh, to Albuquerque, New Mexico, for example, and then I came back to Mexico to, to my gym in Tijuana in that moment, and I started to share like, hey, watch, I I I learned this from this fighter in specific, and this, then we start to practice that move in, in, in practices, you know, in the classes. So, yeah, man, I think that is one of the keys of my victories. I always try to be a student and, and get a lot of knowledge all, uh, with a, a lot of amazing uh, training partners and, uh, and amazing teachers and amazing professors. And for you, Alexa, I, I, I read, I, I read and I follow you a lot, obviously, on social media. How many times did people tell you, you need to leave Guadalajara, you want to be a, you want to be a champion? How many times you heard that? <laughs> and, and, and how does it feel now to be a champion? <laughs> well, it was a big motivation because me and my, my coaches and also my team, we wanted to prove that we can do it. You know, you, the thing you need is to be always there, be on time, always learn. Try to put in practice everything you learn in the sparring. And also something like, like Brandon said, everything I learn, I try to teach that to my partners. Because when you have strong partners, they are going to help you to improve. So every time I learn something, I always say, like, hey, we're going to do this. And we so we are getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, now we have a big team, and it's special for me to be the champion, born, raised, and trained in the same gym that I started. Uh, the, the UFC has in, invested uh, like in development programs, and, and now they're bringing a BI in Mexico. And there's something that sometimes I feel like is really personal for Dana White. Like he wants <laughs> to have a lot of success in Mexico. He wants to have a, a lot of. <laughs> he, he knows like Mexicans and Mexican Americans love combat sports, and yeah. and, and obviously <clears throat> it, it is a big market for them. But uh, have you had chance uh, to speak uh, with Dana after? I mean, obviously you, you, you have been fighting for belts for more, but have you, you or uh, Alexa have a chance to speak with Dana? But what does it mean for him like now to have three champions? No, I haven't. I haven't talked to him. I, I, you saw your interview with him and uh, what he say about the, the Mexicans on the yeah. company. That. But that's it. I, ha I haven't had the opportunity to, to see him. He wasn't on my fight in Australia. Hunter Campbell was there, which is the vice president of the UFC. Uh, but uh, Obviously, it's really important, you know, for the company 
they, they're doing a performance institute here. I was um, seeing the the process of the of the gym. I think it's gonna be done. It's gonna be done by September, if I'm not okay. wrong. And uh, it's just it's a huge step for the sport uh, of MMA in Mexico. And it's just a matter of time uh, for more of these to come in to Mexico. You know. You'll live through this process of uh, like MMA being a, like. Uh, a too violent sport for some some media, right? Uh, probably like uh, you've been uh, like training and, and fighting all this time, and then probably not major media not taking care of MMA. And now that that you guys have are having success and in, in bringing these belts to Mexico, like all media is not realizing that oh we have a lot of talent here. Like how are you are you living this? I mean like the 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 new this new attention, like this grown social media and, and everything. How are you how are you living this moment? I mean, personally, I mean, I have a small circle, starting from that. You know, I have. I'm always with my family. I'm always with my training, with my training partners. I, I I'm always in the gym, tra training very hard. I don't know in the weekends, for example. I'm. I don't have a social life, to be honest. I don't like parties. I don't like like drink or whatever. You know, I, I, I mean, I like to 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 uh, drink beers. Uh, a few times, right? But nothing crazy. Um, but that said, uh, obviously, with these uh, uh, championships, all the uh, sometimes the hate or the people saying like you are the best, you are the you are uh, my, my idol. I mean, I try to be in the middle. You know, I I'm trying to keep a kind of balance in my life. Obviously, I feel I feel very grateful when somebody came with me and started to uh, to talk with me and say like, "Hey, man, you are a huge inspiration for myself." I mean, that's huge, and I really appreciate it. And and I'm fighting for moments like that. But at the same time, I'm just trying to be uh, with my feet on the ground and say like, "Hey, man, I mean, it's, the job is not finished. You need to keep working hard." For you, Alexa. The same as Brandon. I I just truly hope that. When people come to me and say like, hey, you're a big inspiration, they go back at home and work and do the, the same thing, not just like, oh, you're my inspiration. You're, no, do that too, because you can achieve it. And, and also I hope that this can be a big window for us to show the sport in our country and to have more support for all the kids and women and teenagers that want to start to train and have no sources. So I just hope this can help a lot. Yeah, I just like uh, if I can say a message to, to the people is no matter what you do, I'll repeat what I already said, be resilient, you know, because people tend to quit whenever things don't go their way. Yeah. It's just you got to keep on going, you know, how, do you wanna, how are you going to know if you're like that good if you don't keep on going? And uh, just believe in yourself, believe in yourself and uh, you can you can get far in any Thing you decide to do it doesn't have to be this sport specifically you know it, it can be any anything you you do uh, as a, a reporter or as a whatever whatever you, you can think of you can be the best if you really put your attention into it and uh, that's what we, what we have been doing for the last almost nine years maybe even more than that and uh, the results are here in front of us but with this um, historical moment I mean there's obviously the conversation growing and um, you, you, you're causing Misael Rodriguez. He's, he's uh, an Olympic gold, Olympic gold medalist for Mexico, and he's also a pro. Do you think that th this is the moment that when MMA can close the distance with boxing, a sport that has like decades of, uh, of world champions and a lot of uh, representation of probably the, the biggest star in the world is, is, is a Mexican, Canelo Alvarez. So, do you think this is a time where, where the MMA can like close the distance with boxing and, and say like we are? Uh, like in the same level as, 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 as the Mexican boxers. Yeah, I think we are. I think we're on the same level. It's just, just the sport is just 30 years old. If you compare that to boxing, that has been more, been around for more than 100, 150 years, if yeah. I'm not wrong. It's just huge, you know. That talks about the sport itself. Um, and I think we're in th at that level. You know, you, we have seen uh, MMA fighters going to compete to, into MMA. But when have you seen an, 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 a boxer coming to uh, compete into MMA? It's just a different animal, different thing completely. And uh, even when we do that, like in the case of Conor McGregor, he did pretty well against my weather. And um, he, he demonstrated that we are at the level, at the level of, of 
competition with boxing. You had a chance to, to, to meet and uh, have a couple of uh, words with, with Canelo and, and uh, obviously I mean, he's huge in social media, he's a big star, but, but you're getting close, Brandon. You have like, been like, uh, growing a lot of in, in your following. So how, how, how was your, your chat with him? What, what any, advi any advice that he gave? Man, you? I mean, Canelo Alvarez is a gentleman. And when you just, just start to talk with him, you, you, can, you can see why he has all that success, you know? Of course, we, we have a, a little talk with each other, and he gave me a few advices about, you know, the, the fame and all that stuff, you know? Try to be in that small circle, for example, and try to keep doing the hard work every single day. I don't, don't, don't sleep, you know, in your bed because the other guys are working hard to try to take the, the belt uh, to them. Uh, so that's it, man. I have a lot of respect for Canelo Alvarez, you know. Uh, sometimes he has a lot of, of, of hate because I think the, the, the Mexican uh, boxing fans has this feeling of the Mexi Mexican boxer, like, hey, you need to go to the war every single time. I mean, I think it's not the case. I think uh, Canelo Alvarez is an, uh, is an amazing example of the, the good technique, the good footwork, the, the good uh, head movement. And that's it, man. I have a lot of respect, respect for him. I, have, I love boxing. Uh, I love boxing. But at the same time, obviously, I, I, want, I want to put more attention on my sport. You know, I, I think right now the mixed martial arts are taking the advantage of boxing because I think the, the bad uh, management of the, uh, of the boxing in the last years uh, are putting in, in the sport in a bad spot. So I don't know. I, I think uh, mixed martial arts are doing the, the things right. Still, um, Alex, I saw in a couple of interviews uh, that you're, you're, uh, you're going to see Canelo or you want to see Canelo in Guadalajara now he's fighting there? Nice. Yes, I would definitely have to go to that fight. It's going to be in my city. So, yeah, that will be a big, big motivation. And, you know, watch live that fight. <laughs> Timing was not right this year, but uh, do you imagine yourselves like uh, fighting in the same car on a Cinco de Mayo <laughs> on a Independence Day, maybe in September? September could be great. That would be amazing. September you know? I, I mean, that would be amazing. The last time we fought uh, together in the same car was a kind of weird. <laughs> hey, hey, but, but that was, that was that's different. But we hey, were different. different. We were different. <laughs> right now, we, have a, we are in a, huge, in a whole different sp uh, spot, so I think we can do it again. I know, like you say, the, the, maybe the, 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 the time is different. I didn't want to brought that night uh, to conversation. Please. <laughs> but, but man, I mean, I think right now we are all of those uh, different. I think we can do it again, and we'll be better for sure. Well, um, we were talking about this um, viral moment, Jair, when, uh, when, when you were watching Brandon fight in, in Dallas <laughs> Let's in, go, in UFC 277. So uh, <coughs> tell, me, tell me the story about how, how did you get, or why did you get so euphoric, and uh, why, why do you was trying to, <coughs> to support that? That much, Jay. Who was around you? What was the, <laughs> what was your surroundings? This is this is kind of the scenario, you know. Uh, so, I go to my seat, like in front row, and uh, there he comes, <laughs> Davis and Figueredo. And then he sits right next to me, you know, we're carrying his belt in a little uh, box, a Louis Vuitton box and stuff. I was like, cool, you know, I'm I'm chill, you know, I'm I'm here to support my friend. That's it. And uh, but then he started like acting kind of. You know, I don't know, possessive, like, like an alpha, alpha yeah, male. Like an alpha male. <laughs> and I was like, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you, what are you trying to do? You know, and then I was like, okay. Because he was pushing my legs like that and opening his arms like that. And I was like, okay. And then I just crossed my legs like that on top of him. And then he started like, just, you know, like that. Just to and just kind of see his reaction. And then he decided to move away from me. Um, he went away. And then Alexander Volkanovsky was there. And Adesanya was there as well, and some other friends of uh, Kaigara France. And um, basically, my role was all against Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there to support him, right? So I had to do all, all the job that they were doing for, for Kaigara France, I was doing for, for Brandon. So every time that, I don't know, like Kaigara France landed a punch on, on him, everybody was like, ah, oh, really euphoric on the moment, you know? And I was like, just wait, just wait. I look, I look at him, just wait, just wait. You'll see, you'll see, just wait. And then the moment comes, the, the liver the kick, kick. The liver kick comes, and then he goes to the floor. And I was like, right when I saw the liver kick, and I, I hear the, <laughs> and I was like, that's it. And then I start jumping. <laughs> and uh, my manager was right next to me, and he, 
he took it. He took it for a deal because he was, I was like jumping, you know, and I grabbed him because I jumped on top of him. And then I started grabbing him, and he was like, ah, oh, what the fuck is happening? And uh, it, it was an euphoric yeah. moment, you know, but I was really happy for him and for the sport of Mexico, and especially because I could see with my own eyes that uh, everything is possible, you know, and uh, it was an inspiration for me, keep me uh, feel for, for what was next. And um, now I see that's the story. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jair's fight was like a couple of weeks uh, after your fight, and then uh, it was in Australia. It was not, not easy to, to get there. So how did you leave the Jair's championship? I was in, in, in a friend's house, and I was very excited, you know? Uh, I think Jair is very, uh, is very crazy with the feelings. So I, I'm, I, I think I'm an <laughs> introvert. Sometimes I don't try, but in that moment, it's like, man, this guy is, very, very close to achieve an amazing moment in his life, in his career. And I'm so happy for him because we met together in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 2014, right? That's yeah, 2014. Right. And we got an amazing training sessions together. Sometimes a lot of different guys were like very tired to, uh, to keep training. And this guy, no, was like, hey, actually he was the guy who was like, hey, what happened if we go uh, downstairs and we start to train together? I uh, mean, like, let's go, let's, let's do it. So we push uh, each other in that moment in 2014 in, in the development program. So yeah, so it was very special for me. I was very happy for him. I think my wife has a few videos of the moment. Uh, and that's it, I feel a, a lot of love for Jair, especially for that moment he's saying, you know, because he, he was saying all the love, all the support of, my, of me. And in that moment when Figueroa was there, Volkanovski was there, all the, the city kickboxing guy was there. I think <laughs> even, uh, Aysania was there, I think so. Aysania, I don't, I don't Aysania know. Was there, yeah, yeah. So it was crazy. So I don't know. I have a lot of love and respect for Yair for sure. Yeah, they wasn't happy, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then you got no. mixed emotions because you train a lot with Valentina Shevchenko. And yeah. all your friends with, with Alexa. So, so was, how was uh, 285? Yeah, we, I, 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 I told you in the, in, the, in the other interview, it was a kind of a, a uncomfortable moment for me because I know uh, Alexa since a long time ago. And last year I shared a, a, a few weeks, a few training sessions with Valentina. And, you know, it wasn't comfortable because when you have a close relation with both, both fighters, it's, it's kind of like that, you know, like that way. But at the same time, when she won, it was like, hey, at the end of the day, Alexa is my, my, my friend too, and she's Mexican. We are doing <laughs> amazing things uh, together. So Alexa, I, saw, I, I was so happy. Then I went to the locker room, I think so. You was in, in the middle of the interview with Laura Sanko. Yeah. I was like, hey, congrats. It was crazy. So yeah, I feel so uh, 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 very happy with, uh, with Alexa in that moment too. How much uh, pressure or how much, uh, how much like a uh, uh, motivation was for you like to, to watch these fights? Because this happened like in like- Actually. In, not three months, it was like yeah. seven weeks. I mean, it was uh, just uh, from uh, late January to early March. So it would like really happen like to see Brandon win, Jair win, and then that was, that was your chance. Well, it helped me a lot because <laughs> uh, when I saw them winning, I always cry. I always cry, honestly, I always cry. Yeah. <laughs> and of course I cry when they won. <laughs> And I was in training camp, so when I saw that, like, Alexa, you, you have to win. You can't come back to Mexico if you don't <laughs> win that fight because it will be a shame for me to come back without, you know, winning after everything they've done. So, yeah, it was truly it was a big, big motivation. We shine under pressure, that's for sure. <laughs> well, hey, definitely. Actually, definitely. actually, yes. It's crazy because when we are the underdogs, it's like, uh-uh. I don't think so. No. Mm -hmm. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a proof of the the si se puede, the famous uh, yes we can uh, that Mexican fans used to cheer in sport. That you made a a, a statement that night when you when you beat the um, uh, Davidson Figueroa in, in in Arizona. And well, this is the best showing of si se puede. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You always be. You just we'll, started. We'll, we'll be expecting uh, news anytime because you always you you. You're almost gonna start uh, camps uh, anytime yeah. soon, so I hope uh, uh, you guys uh, do well for this time. And uh, well, congratulations, guys! Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Carlos. Gracias. Three Mexican-born champions in the UFC: Alexa Grasso, Jair Rodriguez, and Brandon Moreno. La presilla no para. Uh, <laughs> Carlos. <laughs>